Well, you guys all know Marty. Uh, he's my son's cat. And in fact, my son calls him a little crackhead. And you just watch this for a minute or two while I have a talk with you, and you'll see why he calls him that. What I want to talk about is that I was doing a lot of video on this radio in the first uh, two-thirds of the work, in great detail, actually, because I had decided I wanted to show you some detail I usually don't show because it can get boring. But I kind of wanted to show because there are some folks who haven't done some of these things that I keep saying you've all done it. But uh, life happens, and about two-thirds of the way through the radio, life happened, and I had to really kind of get this radio done because uh, I had fallen behind on everything, and I, I didn't, wasn't as diligent in the last third of the radio project in the recording. So I, I hope you'll understand that I showed as much detail as I could of the things I did show a, a video on, and then at the very last gasp, I just kind of rushed through it. Um, actually, this radio has been back with the owner for some time now. I'm telling you this in the uh, uh, middle of April, and the radio has been back with the owner since uh, early February or mid-February, something like that. So let's, uh, let's just get on with the things I can show you, and I'll do the very best I can with the editing to make sense of it all. All right, guys, here we go. <laughs> it's too lightweight to go far. I know. They always put it inside of something, and they then they fight to get it out. That's like their game. I wonder if with a real mouse they put it. Okay, just um, so that I can remember where this capacitor was, I am going to write down. I'm going to put a little note on here. This is C18, and I'm going to put the negative. This is just where it was, not where it's supposed to be. All right. Just put those on there, and and uh, that will remind me later when I'm trying to figure out what the heck did I do here. And we'll cut this off real close. Get that out of the way. Hi. Hello. You see that I've marked the voltage divider here with those points, I, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, A, B, C, D, and E. I didn't mark the ground. I, uh, I did that so that I could re you know, relate these to what's in the radio. Of course, I've marked the electrolytics there. So here's point A, point B, point C, point D is over here, and point E is over here. I've marked the resistances as measured in here, and they're close enough to the schematic to be valid. Point B is that one that is right between the uh, three, uh, the 250 ohm resistor and the 50 ohm resistor, okay? On the strip, point B, as you can see, is right here. What I did was I removed the, everything that was attached to point B. That would be these two capacitors here. They're kind of twisted together. And Zenith radio has actually had a lot of that. I bet you, I'm pretty sure that's original. This cap here was connected there, and uh, there is a wire down here, it's hard to see, it's connected there too. This is right down here, it's a brown wire, and it goes off here to the output tube. There's also a six microfarad electrolytic capacitor connected from point, uh, point B, um, this point right here, all the way over to point, um, point D, which is right here, okay. I've connected the six mic. This is uh, our 6.7 microfarads. These are both 450 volt. Um, these, it's okay to put them in parallel like this. I'm sure somebody will holler at me and say there's some reason for it. I've been doing it for years and I've never run into any trouble. This is a 6.7 microfarad, positive connected to point D as I mentioned, and the negative is connected to this terminal right here on the terminal strip that I've installed, and it goes from a wire over here to point B on the candom. Now I installed this terminal strip using existing holes. I didn't drill any new holes and I like to use when I can these little button head um, uh, 440 screws and I use uh, nylock nuts on them. So now what I've done is I removed all those capacitors as I said and every for every one of those capacitors, I took a new capacitor and attached one end to that point and soldered it. Okay, so now all the all the places that 
all the items that are going to be connected to that point are connected to that point. Now I left, you'll notice I left these old caps on there and the reason I did that is so that I could go to the other end of those old caps each for each one of them and then just disconnect that other end and connect the new one in that spot. And the reason I do this is uh, not because it looks cool with all the capacitors hanging off like that. I do it because then I, it's really hard for me to get it wrong where these capacitors go. I'm working on one terminal at a time, right? I take everything off of this terminal. Wherever it dangles to when I attach the new thing to it to replace it, you know, it's going to have a dangly end. That dangly end is going to go to the other end of the thing I removed. It's really easy. And it makes sure that I don't get it wrong. And it's, it's, it's actually, I'm not, I'm, it's not bragging or anything. This is just a tip for you. But I actually don't get it wrong that often because I do it this way. And you don't have to be a radio genius, a radio engineer, a radio designer. You don't have to be anything except somebody that is willing to take your time and do this kind of work. I'm an engineer, but I didn't study radios as, as my main field of study. So I'm, I'm as much a newbie as anybody. But I find that if I take my time, I don't have to know a ton. And when I do have to troubleshoot, the troubleshooting is actually usually pretty easy because I've done this through the whole radio. And so any mistake I do make is going to be pretty glaring. Let me make one more point about what I'm doing here. I mentioned that this was a brown wire down here. Okay. And, I, and this here is a brown wire as well. So what I did is the, the, the wire I attached to go to the terminal strip I made brown. Tried to make it as much like those two wires as I can. I have this cloth covered reproduction wire. And I used brown shrink tubing on the components that I attached there. That helps me to make sure that everything that's attached there belongs there. When I'm troubleshooting, if I want to see all the things that are attached to that point, then I'll notice that, hey, they're all brown. All right, and then I can, I can easily find them if they're buried in a nest of parts. I can easily find which component is actually attached there and which one is not. It, I do, it doesn't work out all the time. Sometimes it gets complicated to do that kind of thing. But when I can, I do. And so I always have a good supply of shrink tubing of different colors. Now, you can use spaghetti tubing if you want. That's fine. A lot of people like spaghetti tubing. It's been around for years. I like the shrink tubing because it will conform nicely to the bends I make in the wire. After I shrink it down, it looks real nice. It looks very professional to me. That's just me. You do what you want. But if I were you, I would not assemble these components into a chassis, new components, without putting something to insulate those wires. I know they didn't do that when they built the radio, but they, they built the radio. The people that built the radio were experienced people that did it over and over and over all day long. And uh, they, they could do it with their eyes closed. But we are not that way, right? This is probably the only radio like this that I'm going to do for a while. So I like to insulate these so that I don't make a mistake and touch two bare wires together and cause, cause myself a problem. All right. And plus, later on, if I ever have to get into this radio again, number one, I'll know that I was there working on it because I don't know a lot of other technicians locally that do this because this stuff's expensive. And number two, I can tell just what I did and what I didn't do because I used it on every replacement part that I put in. So there you go. Uh, just some ideas, guys. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and attach the other ends of all, all these capacitors and take these old ones out. All right. And then I'll get to work on the next terminal that I decide I want to do. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be testing resistors. These carbon comps a lot of times will drift high. I'll test it. If it's not drifted high, there's no need to, to, to replace it. Some people have said to me, you replace all the resistors, you're in there, you know, you might as well. No, that is an easy resistor to get to if I need to later. If I find a problem with the voltages, I can replace that resistor if I need to. But if it, it's supposed to be a 220 uh, kilo ohm resistor, if it measures anywhere within about 10% of 220, I'm going to leave it alone because anything I put in its place is not likely to be any better than that. Besides, I like to use these carbon compositions because I know they're rated for the voltages seen in this radio. So I have a whole bunch of new old stark, stock carbon comps and I'll use them on the ones that I need to. But if I don't have to replace them, that's wasted money. And uh, I, I don't like to put metal film or, you know, uh, that kind of thing in there. Because some of those resistors, I'm not sure what voltage they're rated at. They might only be rated for a couple hundred volts or maybe only 50 volts. Who knows? They, typically in today's, you know, audio components or any kind of electronics, they don't see the kind of voltages that old radios see. So I'm going to leave the carbon comps if I can. If they're bad, I'll replace them. Piece of cake, guys piece of cake. 
All right, guys, here's a close-up view of what I'm talking about with measuring resistances in circuit. This is a 180K resistor right here. It's a little carbon comp. It's a little half-watt resistor. Well, I'm going to measure across this resistor. I've already got one alligator clip connected to it, and it should measure 180K or a little less than 180K because there might be some parallel action going on with other resistors in the circuit. But in any event, it should never read higher than 180K and the good news is, is that when resistors drift, they always drift high. So what will happen here is if I measure this and it measures, you know, say it measured 150K, well, I could probably feel reasonably comfortable that this resistor is okay. And that the reason I'm seeing a low resistance is that it's, it's sitting in parallel with this guy or something like that. Now, it might read 180K, and in that case, I know it's fine too. But if it reads higher than 180K, or even if it reads right at 180K, I might be a little suspect. But certainly when it reads higher, it reads higher than 180K, that resistor is going away. Um, it's, it's drifted high, it's likely to continue to drift high, and I don't, wanna, I don't want a chance leaving it in there. Let me see if I can put the multimeter where you can see it without it being in the way of the camera. I don't know, can you see it okay? All right, so let's do it. Let's connect it up. There we go. And what do we see? Looks like 204, 205 or so. Looks kind of like a capacitor might be charging up. 205 kilo ohms, which is pretty high. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, 25K higher than the resistor is supposed to be. And it's 180K is the, uh, is the rated. 10% of 180K would be 18K higher. This is greater than that. So to me, that says get rid of it. Now, if it was right at 10%, I might get rid of it too. It's just going to be a judgment call. But for me, 10% is that uh, absolute drop dead threshold. If it's, if, the ten, if it's out by 10% and high, on the high side, if it's out by 10% high or more, it goes. All right, so I'm going to, re I'm going to remove this guy, and I'm going to put a new one in there. Uh, since I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and install this one there at the same time. This, this capacitor actually goes where this little wire nub is because I cut this old one off. Now sometimes, not that often, I use the corkscrew method. I know it's a perfectly good connection. I, I get that. I like it. But I don't I personally don't like the way they look that much. And so unless I mean if it's gonna damage a component, like if I were gonna leave that resistor in, I might do the corkscrew because I don't want to get that resistor too hot. And it's gonna get hot sitting there like that. But most of the time, I'll go ahead and, you know, soak the solder out and replace it. That's a personal preference. I'm not saying that it has to be that way. I'm not saying that it's better that way. So don't scold me in the comments. Uh, as long as you get a good electrical connection, it really doesn't matter. All right, let me go ahead and do that, and I'll connect all these capacitors up. And then we'll get back to business. I'll show you where we are. Real quick, let me add to that um, what I was just showing you with these capacitors. Now, in order to attach this capacitor, of course, I had to disconnect this 180K that we just talked about. And just like I did with these caps, I'm going to swing that up out of the way. And when I put the new one in, I'll know where it goes. So you see what I'm doing is you, you, kinda, you kind of cascade through the radio along different paths. Does that mean that sometimes you need to leave a component dangle for a bit so, as you're following a path? Yeah. And so I'm going to show you something that I learned uh, from John from Arkansas. And he did this quite some time ago when he was doing a television set. I think it was his, uh, his halo light, but I'm not sure. Um, he, when you want to remember where a component is supposed to be attached, but you're not going to get to it for a little while, say the phone rings even, or your kid comes in the room and you, don't, you, know, you want to stop and pay attention to your kid, you take one of these gator wires, okay, piece of cake. I know I'm up close here, but you take this gator wire. You attach one end of the gator wire to where that component's got to go. Attach the other wire end of the gator wire to the component. And then when you come back to it, you know exactly where they go. Piece of cake. Now, you can buy these for like three bucks for a pack of 20 at Harbor Freight. Maybe it's a few dollars more, but they come in all different colors. Usually, I don't use these too much for test leads. A little bit, but not much. But I do use them for this. So I buy a couple packs at a time in all different colors. And so the really cool thing about this is maybe I don't want to chase down this path right here after this at this end of the resistor. Maybe I want to work right here and go that way along this path away from you know this resistor and down the line. So and that being the case, 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, before because I have you know I, I'm not going to solder that till I get everything in place. I'm going to go ahead and attach that there just like I just showed you, and there you go. No big deal. Piece of cake. Nothing to it, guys. You see this wire right here? This one here. If you look real close, you'll see that this is basically a yellow wire with some red tracer. So what I'm going to do is, since I don't have any yellow wire with a red tracer, I do have some yellow wire, and I do have a red sharpie. So uh, why not just take a red sharpie and make a yellow wire with a red tracer? Kind of makes sense to me, right? What do you think? No big deal. Doesn't have to be artistic or fancy. The, the whole idea is that someday somebody else is going to maybe look in this radio and it'd be helpful if we're if we at least make an attempt to be at the color code. So let me go ahead and finish making the tracer on this and I'll get it installed. The reason that I have to install this in the first place is I need to extend that wire and I'll show you why that is in just a minute. Alrighty, I said it doesn't have to be fancy and it's not fancy. The reason I have to extend this wire using this one here is that I moved this capacitor, C18, I have moved this capacitor up to here on the terminal strip. All right, um, I'm just trying to keep it neat and I don't want to remove that capacitor. I like to preserve those in place. Yes, I replace them, I abandon them. Uh, no, if I can help it, I don't pull them out and restuff them because in my view that, as I've said many times before, that destroys whatever history that component being intact might have provided someone. That is the main reason. That's not because I'm lazy and I, I don't want to do it. It's because I don't like destroying that component. Someday somebody might be curious and want to know how that thing is put together and I'd kind of like to leave it alone so they can do that. It makes no difference electrically wh whether I restuff it or I just relocate it. So um, I think that's the right way to go. Uh, your mileage may vary. So I'll go ahead and uh, put a little bit of tree sap on this guy here. All I'm doing is, is uh, butt splicing couple of uh, stranded wires. With stranded wire I find I turn my soldering iron up just a little higher temperature. So usually I'm soldering at right around 7 to 710 degrees. But when I solder stranded wire I usually turn it up to about 740 degrees. And uh, stranded wire can often be a little harder to solder especially if it's old stranded wire. It may have just a little bit of corrosion on it. That flux will take care of that corrosion but it, it needs a higher temperature for it to flow properly. All right, let's go with this. I like to put, when I'm doing wire, stranded wire, I put a bit of solder on the tip of the soldering iron, get it good and hot, and I just touch it to it, and it usually will flow into that wire very nicely, and then it takes very little additional solder. Get a real nice tight joint that way. And of course, I'm not keen to have that bit of bare wire sitting out in the open. So what I like to do then is put a, a bit of sh uh, shrink tubing over it, just cut myself a little piece of yellow shrink tube. Really no big deal and slide it over the wire. I won't bother making that shrink tube uh, uh, have red tracer. If nothing else it'll kind of indicate to somebody, hey there's a repair here. Okay, so now I can go ahead and run this wire however I want to, which I'm going to run it under here out of the way, right alongside, right alongside this output tube. I hope I have plenty of length, because I thought I measured it. All right, yes I do. Now this is the, the negative, the B minus wire. This is this yellow this yellow wire with the red tracer is coming from the center tap of the secondary of the main power transformer, the primary high voltage secondary. Primary high voltage secondary, you know the main high voltage secondary. The uh, the, the winding that uh, the plates for the rectifier tube go to. So I kind of want to make sure that's in good shape but yet out of the way. I already put some flux on there because I almost forgot to wire this on. Let me go ahead and put some heat to that. While I'm waiting for the soldering iron I will explain that then I'll go then I will next remove these wires from the positive terminal 
of this uh, capacitor. And actually, what I can do, if I want to, and again, this isn't a, what a purist would do, but I'm trying to be electrically correct here. What I really can do is I could just run a wire right from here up to the positive of this electrolytic up here. It's electrically the same as moving these three components up to here, but I don't have to heat up this resistor or these wires to make that happen. I think that's what I'll do. As long as I have one side of this capacitor disconnected, then this is just a terminal. There's no capacitor there. It needs two terminals to be a capacitor, so it's not going to do anything capacitance-wise. It's just going to provide a terminal for me that's convenient. I can melt the solder in that terminal right there and run a wire through the hole. There will be room in that hole and then run that wire right up here to the positive on this side and I call it done. And that is actually probably better because I risk doing damage at least to that one watt resistor by putting a lot of heat there because it's got a really short lead. Not only will that be more convenient and fast, but I don't really want to horse with this resistor very much because I don't want to damage it. it it's, it's in good shape right now. I want to keep it that way. So uh, let me go ahead and solder this guy right here, the negative side of that cap. And then in a minute, I will get to work on that other wire that we just talked about. I bought a couple of new tripods. Well, I'm waiting for them to be delivered. Amazon has already, Amazon's already dropped the ball on a couple of things today. A, a coffee maker that I ordered for my wife was supposed to be here yesterday, didn't show up yesterday. Now I get a note today from Amazon saying they lost it in transit, which means some bonehead dropped it on the floor and broke it, and they don't know what to say about it. So that's Amazon Logistics. I don't know if any of you guys buy on Amazon, but my opinion is Amazon Logistics is not ready for prime time. Um, whenever I get something that I've ordered from those guys, and it comes through Amazon Logistics, it's either late or doesn't show up. I mean, almost every time. And uh, that's getting tiresome. That's my one complaint about Amazon, is you cannot pick the shipping method. And so lately, I've been buying most of my camera gear from a place called B&H Photo out in New York. And they do a good job. And when I, when I call customer service, I get somebody that works right there at the store in New York. Isn't that cool? It's kind of novel, isn't it, these days? All right, let me go ahead and get this wire set up from here to here. First, I'm going to want to poke it through that, uh, that terminal right there. Now, remember, this is the return path for all the current, all the plate current that's flowing in the radio. This B minus goes to the center tap. And for the radio, it's the most negative point in the whole set, is that, is that point. I don't know if this will just glide through or if I'll have to melt that solder out. I don't want to. I hope the light's not messing you up, guys. I still haven't bought my new IKEA gooseneck lamps. I just, I don't, uh, the idea of going into that store just turns me off. But the item, I, I guess they, they probably have it online. I haven't checked. It's real expensive on Amazon. It's like twice the price, so I don't want to buy it that way. Come on, come on. Well, that's not going to work. I tried, guys. So, the only thing left for it is to melt that solder out of there and subject that resistor to a little bit of heat. What I can do is put a heat sink right there on the... Well, I might not be able to get it around there. What I was going to say is put a heat sink right there on, around this cap on the end of the resistor. Maybe if I'm real careful, I'll just put it right there and I'll keep most of that heat from getting to the resistor. It'll also pull heat away from my trying to melt that solder, but I think I should be able to do it. Oh, 
yeah, it's going to work fine. If I have to poke a wire through a terminal that already has some wires in it, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take something like this, this dental tool, and I'll heat that up and I'll poke it through to make space. It, what it'll do is kind of squish the other wires together a little bit and make some space. Let's see if that works here. This is a little bit of a thick dental tool, but I might get lucky. Well, let me try a thinner one. That might be the right way to go. See, the solder won't stick to the stainless steel of this little awl. And so I can let it cool. It makes a nice, nice solid hole opening. And then I can poke my wire through there and I'm good to go. I hope you saw that. I guess if you see this, if you see it in the video, then you saw it because otherwise I'll have edited it out. <laughs> Let's see here. There we go. See that? Pokes right through. Pull this around. Make it as tight as I can without being nuts about it. Put a little bit of tree sap on there. My tree sap's getting dried out again. I never get through a full container because it dries out before I can get to that point. I don't know what to do about it. If you guys know if there's some solvent that I can put in it or something to make it soft again, that'd be great. So like I said, all this, all that's, all that I've done here is turn this term, this little spot on the capacitor into a terminal. That's it. That's all I've done. And I'm looking at it now. And I'm thinking I could have used this guy right here. I don't know what the heck, man, why I didn't see that. But it's too late now. I've already got that set up. But I could have used that spot right there and just attach the wire there. Wouldn't I have to heat up this at all? Oh, well. I know a couple of you are out there yelling, Hey, bonehead, don't you see? There's another terminal right there. Well, it's okay. It wouldn't be the first time somebody yelled. and wouldn't be the first time someone called me bonehead. Okie dokie. And just take this to run it over. I'll run it along the bottom here. And I'll come up back there in the corner. Alright, and then I'll come straight up to the spot here. I'll try to stay away from that can dome because they get warm. Now I buy this reproduction, in case any of you are wondering as you watch, I buy this reproduction cloth wire from Radio Days. And they have two sizes. I like them both and I buy them both. One size is like a 600 volt rated, and that's good. It's a little thicker than this. And then this size, they say not rated, but from the looks of it, I'm guessing about 400 volts. Maybe more, because it has nice Teflon insulation. They just haven't rated it, so they can't say. And that's just fine. I use that for a lot of stuff in these, because I, I know it's fine from just from experience. But it's good quality, real good quality. Of course, Radio Days doesn't do anything of poor quality. I, I've noticed that. I don't. They're a pretty good company. They do a nice job, and without them, we'd all be in a world of hurt on some of the things we buy for our radios. I'm just gonna walk this up. There we go. Piece of cake. How do you how do you like that? And I will run this wire now right up through there. Nothing to it, except when the damn strands get pushed out of the way. Damn. Alright guys, I'll tell you what, it is getting late and I'm getting shaky. And uh, I think it's time we wrap this one up, so... I'm going to go ahead and shut this down, and we'll pick up right here next time. And so, uh, once again, from your western outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.